Here's the update for my well two viewers. Here's an update for my two viewers on this 8-bit computer, microcomputer project. It still hasn't got a name because yeah, I'm just terrible at naming. And you probably seen this board like this in the last video. So yeah, not a lot of updates on this side, but r the real difference happens in the back, like literally. Yeah, this is not the neatest soldering job. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's not the neatest soldering job I've seen, but I'm trying. <laughs> Trust me, I'm trying. This is the most complicated soldering job I've ever done and I believe that well some of you might be wondering well why bother doing this like Ben Hex style barbed wire super solder projects and the reason is I kind of just feel like it <laughs> well it all starts actually from here with this board. This is a VGA adapter, the same one as one that Ben Eater did on the breadboard. The only exception is I didn't have a breadboard back then when I soldered this thing, or I did have, but I didn't have enough breadboards to make that video uh, to make the circuit showing in that video and I kind of improved the circuit on the fly when I'm, like following the series and trying to copy the circuit and I basically use a lower speed clock but achieve better results it's like 160 by 120 I believe and I got like 256 color support and I think many Ben Eater VGA ripoffs on YouTube has 256 color and 160 by 120 resolution. I believe we basically discover the same improvement that can be down to that circuit. And then there's this circuit board. And as you can see, they look very different, but believe it or not, believe it or not, well, <laughs> excuse my accent, uh, this board is actually exactly the same as this one. So why bother this complication here? Well, actually I lied a little bit because if you split up the circuit board from here, from in the middle, the left hand side is almost an exact replica of this one except that I kind of consolidated the counter chips with like 8-bit counter counters instead of like 4-bit I think that's the only difference but this side is actually a 65 CO2 based single board computer with like 16k of ROM and I believe it's like 2K of RAM and a 32K of shared video RAM. Basically it's shared between the like the video circuit and the CPU. So you can actually use some spare bytes in this RAM to store data because some of that RAM is not mapped to the screen. But if you can look at this circuit here, it's basically um, a bus arbitration circuit or something. I, I, I don't remember because those circuits cannot access the bus at the same time. And I use the simplest kind of like bus arbitration, which is when the CPU requests the bus, the video 
like the graphics card is just cut off. So you will see on this graphics card if you are not careful enough, you will see the snow effects that is present on early VGA cards. So yeah, and that's that. And here we have like controls and like a little joystick slash like game controller stuff here and it's actually running Pong and I believe the last time I burned this EEPROM I like rolled a little Pong game into it and it's basically a two person game one controlling these two like buttons and the other one control these two and yeah and then there is this circuit board and this is a uh, way more complicated although there are fewer chips this is a like 6502 based like small home computer slash game console thing and it has a PPU that is commonly found on Famicom's or Nintendo Entertainment System the, the NES this header here is for an LCD screen that just sits on the AY3 sound chip from here, which is found on MSX computers, later Spectrums, the Atari ST, and like other computers. So this computer actually runs at 2 MHz, which is make it slightly faster than the NES. And the surprise is that uh this circuit, the PPU is actually designed to be interfaced with like 1.79 MHz CPU like with that in mind so I'm kind of surprised that it can run at some like 2 MHz and you can actually speed it up to like 4 MHz and then 8 MHz and then down to like 1 MHz and Wait, you can speed it up to 4 MHz and down to 500 kilohertz. So, I believe that any speed that's higher than like 1 MHz or 2 MHz, these part of the circuits like the PPU and the AY3 chip, I believe at 2 MHz the, the PPU stops working. No, the PPU keeps working. Uh, at 4 MHz, none of these works. But if you run at 4 MHz, you must use peripherals connected through this pin header here. Yeah, it's basically reserved to for future expansions for like external floppy drives, external hard drives, even like external graphics, like stuff like that. Like this is the ma majority of the peripherals should be connected to and this is like a debugging screen and basically the LCD is added like later in the project when the soldering has begun and I look at the sketchmatic and I said well I can add an LCD there so yeah and this is like the debugging screen before I can get this debugging screen working and this computer has Wasmon in it so all these computers or like graphics boards uh, I think they deserve their own videos because there are more magic happening in them like this board actually runs at 8 MHz which makes it runs almost the same speed as the Commander X16 and what's more because there is this bus arbitration circuit that 8 MHz is not like divided between the CPU and the graphics card circuit. Uh, if the CPU is not accessing this part of the RAM, uh, it is basically free to run. So w that's why I say this part is like a separate like 6502 based like single board computer. And actually this is a this is a multiplexer circuit. Uh, chip that I pillaged and I'm now putting a spare one here yeah yeah that's it